Welcome back my friends to another episode, episode 20 today and thank you all for showing up and being here. I've had a lot of fun with these videos and so many more to come. If you've been enjoying this channel, just do me a favor. If you can smash that subscribe button, I would appreciate it. Love getting the momentum we have on this channel. And today, I am speaking on a very specific subject it's for photographers. I'm assuming a lot of you are photographers and talking about posing. Specifically today, I'm talking about mistakes I see when posing couples. And kind of a broader perspective, I wanna talk about the three biggest mistakes I see during or even leading up. The three biggest mistakes I see, if you will, that affect the poses, the photographs of the couple. And then I wanna give some solutions so you don't have to be stuck with those uh, mistakes if you've been making them. And I've made all these, I've learned the hard way. I've learned because I have made the biggest mistakes in posing and realizing something's not working so I've had to adjust, learn, and fix. So hopefully today you can get those solutions out of this video. And if you are new here, welcome to the James and Jess channel. My wife Jess and I have been photographing weddings for over a decade now and for my wife 15 years. Internationally we've been named number one wedding photographer by California Wedding Day and now we get to hop on YouTube and chat with amazing creative entrepreneurs like yourself and travel the world teaching other entrepreneurs and photographers how to thrive in business and in life. So without any further ado, let's dive into the three biggest posing mistakes. Mistake number one, this comes way before, way before you were actually even in person with the people with the camera in your hand because we all know owning a business, photography or just owning a creative business, only a small portion of it has to do with the actual shooting part or the actual creating part. A lot of it is the back work or the post work and all the things that go into it. And the number one thing I see, if you're gonna take one out of the three things I tell you today, it's this one, is there's not enough communication. And sometimes no communication at all. Uh, a huge part of going into a photo shoot and having your couple or your senior or whoever you're taking a portrait of excited and fired up and reflecting the mood you want them to, is communication. With a lack of communication, you're kind of leaving it up to chance what they're gonna wear, how they're gonna feel, what how they're going to interpret you before you even show up. So I know this out of personal experience because I used to not communicate enough with clients. And a big thing is not communicating what to wear, how to prepare, you know, where to meet, all those details. And you might be assuming, well, some of those things can go unsaid. You know, you it's common sense. It's common sense to us because we're professionals, we're experts in our field, but to someone who's maybe just having their picture taken for the first time professionally or in a long time or with someone as expert level as you, you, you should be doing extra communication. So rule one, assume they don't know. And then rule two, communicate it and over communicate it in a manner that's fun, gonna reflect excitement and get them best prepared for the photo shoot ahead. And I learned this because Jess and I used to just write out really simply like, hey, don't do this, do this. It was way too simple because we had enough people showing up to where colors clash, patterns clash, and it just wasn't the brand we were going for, it wasn't attracting our ideal clients and all those things, which I'm gonna geek out hard on in a few videos from right now, uh, attracting your ideal client. So we decided, you know what? We went one direction. We said, here's what not to wear. It was just a brief, hey, here's a few things that don't work well together. Th that backfired on us big time because I don't think they read the not part, like don't wear this. And we show up to this session and this couple is wearing everything in the do not part to the point that I thought it was a joke. And you know, it was a vibrant neon sequency club top, I guess you could describe it as, and a very vibrant Hawaiian shirt. And those things in their own right, sure, to each their own, but in a photo, not appropriate. I also have a lot of brides during their engagement session where I used to, years ago, before I communicated everything, uh, that didn't get their nails done because they just didn't think about it. You know, we assume they know, but some of them don't or they're already stressed about a photo session and all those things, so they forget to get their nails done because I didn't remind them. And during the engagement session, I go to take that beautiful shot of her hand up here on her husband's or her groom's chest and get the ring and the, ring, the nails are all chipped and not good and I risk upsetting them because 
they might think, well, what did, why didn't they tell me? Or at least they feel dumb or bad or ignorant that they didn't think about it when all I would have to do is communicate it to them. So point number one to the biggest mistake of not communicating and not over communicating, things you should be communicating obviously are what to wear. I'm not saying go dictate their new wardrobe, but certain things photograph well and certain things definitely do not. You and I both know that. So give them the guidelines enough and inspiration. Jess and I send this big, beautiful email that has for him, for her, all these things mapped out, what works, what doesn't, and a Pinterest board that they can click that has photos of ours, photos from Pinterest of inspiration that we love. And while doing that, you're curating the type of photos and outfits you want to be photographing because you know best and you know what photographs best. You also need to be communicating how to best prepare. Everything from getting your hair done, hair and makeup. You can talk about if you want your hair and makeup trial for the wedding, it's a good time to use that, to getting a neck trim or a beard trim for the guy. All those little details, getting your ring clean, getting your nails done, all those little things should be communicated, of course, down to where to meet and what time. And if you're gonna go what time, I always, I literally put it 30 minutes ahead because we personally have everyone over to our house if we're in Santa Barbara before to have a cocktail, got the bar, make smiles come easier, or at least at a winery, because people run late. <clears throat> and I'd rather have to skimp on the having a good time with the drink beforehand than being late to a photo session. So allow that buffer. So point number one and biggest mistake I see is not enough communication on how to prepare, what to wear, and getting excited because Someone's gonna reflect your mood, so if you express all the details in drastic excitement, they're gonna reflect that too. And the other way we communicate is we have a style guide, and that is just a big, it's for weddings and engagement sessions. I just made it years ago, I think it's 98 pages. We just updated it uh, for a few new things, and it's wonderful. But at the very least, you should be sending in beautiful big email that communicates all those things. And to help you out, uh, if you click the link below this video, I'm giving you our email. It's the exact email that we use, that we send to prepare all of our brides and grooms and couples for their engagement session. So that's my gift to you. Go ahead and click that link. You can copy it verbatim. You can put your own spin on it and your words, but it's good and it works and it works for us every single time. I'm also gonna leave Jess's Pinterest link in there. Feel free to use that link. You can say, here's some inspiration on a Pinterest board or wanna make your own, go onto her Pinterest board and repin all those things because you can create your own board. That's our gift to you. Moving on to point number two. Point number two is during the session and it's not enough praise. It's not enough communicating, I guess communication again, but it's not enough communicating and praise during the session. It's intimidating having your photo taken. In fact, every single year, Jess and I, since we travel so much, we choose a different photographer that we've never had take our photos before and we hire them to do an anniversary session or just a couple session of us for several reasons. One, it's always fun learning how other people photograph and shoot, but mostly I want to put myself through what my clients go through every year. And I'm particularly comfortable in front of a camera. I haven't always been and I, I'm really good behind the camera. So it's nice to get in kind of that mental space of kind of what our couples feel like and it's terrifying. From the over communication part, I've had couples that or photographers that don't over communicate and I'm like, what do I wear? Even though I have a style guide that I built, it's still nerve wracking. All the way down to, I've had photo shoots where they don't say anything, they're just like that hyper creative, which is a great thing to be, but very quiet and very focused on what's inside the camera, on what they're creating inside the camera, all while not understanding while they're doing that, they're losing me in front of the camera because I'm concerned we're not talking, there's no connection here. And if I'm not connected to you photographing me, it's gonna be really hard for me and Jess or you and her or who, whoever the couple is to, to connect with each other. And that's what you're kind of going for. All that connection needs to be there. And one of the biggest ways to do that is give praise. And I would say give praise often and especially give praise early. That's one of those things that, for example, say, if you're at the gym, maybe you joined a new gym or a workout class and you know, you're know you on the rower and you're kind of doing a movement or something and you're like, I think this is what everyone else is doing. This is what the, the coaches are saying to do, but you're not sure. 
and during the middle of a workout, when that coach comes by and says, yes, James, that's exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Not only do you feel better because you're affirmed and praised, but you lean into it more because you actually know you're doing it right. The more you do that for your couples on those little, yes, that's perfect, or do that again, that was wonderful, and, 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 and elaborate on the praise with them, they're gonna get more and more comfortable, they're gonna connect more with each other, and they're gonna get more confident, and they're going to lean in to those photos and that experience more, giving you better photos, giving them a better experience. So, always be praising and praising often. There is a thought in the photo world that's pretty popular of almost like never shut up, always praise, talk, 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 talk. I disagree with that. I think you should be appropriately praising and to each their own. I'm an extrovert, I probably talk more than a lot of people, but there's also a lot of photographers that are introverts or quiet and the couple they're connecting with is a little bit quieter. That's where it's up to you as the expert to read the couple. If they're having a moment and you've got them in that, I'm not gonna be like, yeah, you guys are perfect. I'm just gonna let them do that. But if we're breaking in and we're having fun, I'm gonna be louder. Remember, they're gonna reflect your mood. And it's up to you as the expert to start to understand how to do that. But off, just off the cuff, rule of thumb, be praising and praising often. A little side, you could do this, uh, solution to this is Jess and I actually show the back of the camera really quickly. We hardly show it throughout the shoot and they never grab our camera and scroll through by any means. But pretty quickly, when I know I nailed one of those shots or I know Jess nailed the shot that they're going to love, I very quickly turn it and say, guys, look how good you look. And that immediately relieves any tension they've had because they're confident in that. We do that all the time and we only do it two or three times a shoot max, but we do it quick because it gets them. It's like that praise. Look how good you look. You're doing it right. Awesome. They lean in more. So now for the third biggest mistake I see, and this is has to do with the very specific posing part. A mistake I see a lot, especially with, with a lot of photographers, new or experienced, is they just use a set list. Now, I'm all about having a system and a guideline of shooting, but I see way too many photographers where you know it's just this shot, this shot, this shot, this shot, or pose, 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 pose. I'm all about that, and I'm all about flowing and posing and having those ideas and your set things and signature looks and shots and all those things, but there's a way to do it much more rather than having a checklist, make sure I get those photos, Jess and I boil down uh, uh, basically 350 weddings, 500 plus sessions and over a decade of experience, 25 years combined experience into, it's like music. We, we boiled it down into essentially seven fundamental poses or looks, if you will, that just like musical notes, there's eight musical notes and all the music in the world is created with that. We've boiled down all of that, all of the posing into seven fundamental notes or poses, if you will, that when you learn them, allows you to have creative freedom to literally create any environment and any photo you want. And in the coming days, I'm gonna be talking way more about those fundamentals. And there's nothing wrong with using a set list, but think about those things on your list and start to understand where you could kind of break the rules in that list. Use it as a baseline, but then start to have fun in reading the couple more. I know those are three big things, but today to wrap this up, I just want to end on one thing and that's the communication thing. In the coming days, I'm gonna break down the other ones and I'm gonna talk about poses and the fundamentals and we're gonna jam on that, but right now, Think about the next sessions you have coming up or that you really want to prepare for. Download that email, send them that to prepare for it, and you're gonna be so much better off because they're gonna know what to wear, they're gonna be excited, you're not gonna be worried about leaving it up to chance when they show up to the session, and you're gonna look even more like an expert because this email is amazing and you're communicating all those things going above and beyond. Just like I talk about in the client experience graph, this email is one of those ways to level up their experience. And until next time, thank you for being here. You are so capable of doing great and amazing things. If you like this video, hit subscribe, smash that like button. And until next time, I will see you in the next video.